many burdens that we have to bear. But there's a prayer bell at the Lord's right hand. If it rang and he will understand. Prayer bells in heaven know how sweet they they ring. They ring a message unto Jesus our King. When you are burdened down with sorrows and care, bring on and on, God will answer your prayer. Well, into the garden, Jesus went to pray. Until the sweat became his blood, they say. Bring in the prayer bells there in agony. Bring in salvation that we might be free. Well, prayer bells in heaven, Lord, how sweet they, they ring. They ring a message unto Jesus our King. When you are burdened down with sorrow and care, Ring on and on, God will answer your prayer. Yeah, good morning. Hey, y'all loud and proud this morning, ain't you? Their bellies are full. Everybody took a nap during Sunday school. So it wasn't. No, our Sunday school class was lively. Chad. <clears throat> Anyways, won't you stand? If you're following along in the hymnals, it's 514. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. Amen. You may be seated. Be good, Jamie. You had my mic on while we were singing. You don't get to talk yet. Isn't it awesome to see him sitting up there right now? Well, your announcements are in the back of your bulletin. Uh, Eminence Day, again, uh, September 24th. We've already gotten a few crafts and so many people signing up. Appreciate that. Um, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a real good day. Franklin Baptist Church will be represented at Eminence Day. Uh, so come by and buy all the goodies and all that good stuff. The fall festival coming up the 22nd. Um, <laughs> we were rearranging my office last night. We, we got Amy's she shed kind of done. Yes, it's a she shed, and we figured out why, because I can't walk in without ducking. <laughs> she said that's what makes it hers. But anyway, <laughs> so we then decided we were going to redo my office. I, really, I just hated the way it was. and uh, So up on my wall... We was going to hang. <laughs> she hung up the chili cook-off trophy. It just stayed up there for a little bit. But it looks so good, and it's going to look really good there for another year, is the way I say. 
and I'm switching crock pots in case anybody knows what my crock pot looks like. So <laughs> I already know all you people judging going in automatically and say, well, that's Jamie's. We're going to pass it back. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm meeting with Paul uh, Briscoe and Joey Woods today to talk about our round robin revival. I'm, I'm getting more excited about it every time we talk about it. Uh, it's going to be between our church, Union Church, and Lockport. And we're just going to make a trip that week to each church. We're going to have a revival every night, and then we're going to finish up over here uh, listening to the nobleman. And I think it's just going to be a fantastic um, um, week of worship. Uh, softball, if you're interested, games start next Saturday or next Sunday after church. I can't remember. Well, I think we play it two the first time, but I've got the schedule. If you're interested, I had a few people already. If you're interested in playing, uh, you don't have to sign any paperwork. We just... If you got a pulse uh, and, and you've seen what a softball looks like, please come on out. Uh, no, it's a great time. There's only, it, it's not even a fall league. It's pretty much just a September league, it looks like. So it'll be fun. Uh, Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief, it's on there where if you want to donate, uh, we'll be collecting through next Sunday. Uh, and the mill at Twin Oaks had a good response on it so far. Debbie, is there anything I need to add? Where's Debbie at? There you are. You was, gosh, you're everywhere. You do. You do. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you, everybody, that signed up so far. Really appreciate that. Women's ministry uh, meets September 11th and October 9th at 6 for prayer meeting and devotional. Location to be announced. Where's that at? Oh, my bad. <coughs> Collecting the items, yes. Where's, it's on there somewhere, isn't it? Oh, oh, yes, women's ministry will be collecting items to take with the meal, uh, at least 20 small items, lotion, journal, magazine, etc. cetera, uh, and you can drop that off at the back of the church. Somebody was asking about that this morning, so just drop it off at the back of the church. Do we have any dishes left back there? All right, seriously, they're getting ready to go on eBay. It's fixing to happen. I'm getting ready to make some money. <laughs> so if you've got a dish and you left it, get it out from behind the church. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. What? Uh, Becky, stand up. Becky. Be Becky. 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 Becky Newton. Come on, Fry. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, it's all right. Come on. Come on. Elvis already sang to her. Ain't I saw that picture. No offense, he didn't look like Elvis. <laughs> All right, won't you stand? Let's sing happy birthday. <coughs> Welcome each other to church.
All right, as you return to your seats, you may be seated. You don't have to stand up. Hey, all the little kids, if you want to come up front right now, all the kids, all you little ones, all y'all. Not you, Philip. Sit down. No, you can come up here, too, if you want to. All the little ones, come on up. Good morning. We have a big crowd in here today. Okay, today I want to talk about promises. Have you ever made a promise to somebody? Have you ever had somebody make a promise to you? You know, if they kept it, or if you kept it, or if you didn't keep it? Why don't we ask these people out here, see how they did. Have you all ever made a promise to somebody? Had a promise made to you? Did they always keep it? Did you always keep it? No. Yeah, they try to, though. Well, do you know that God made 7,487 promises to us in his word? And he has kept every one of them. Isn't that amazing? So when we try to be, be like God, then we need to do our best that when we make our promise to somebody that we need to keep them. And his greatest promise was that he was going to take care of us because when he left, when Jesus left to go back to heaven, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. So we want to make sure that we choose him for our Savior so that we can enjoy that place he set for us. Don't we think that's a good idea? We want to be in heaven when, G when the time comes to be with Jesus. So, did, would anybody like to say our prayer? No? Okay, I'll do it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, for this time that we get to share together in your house, for the time that we get to share with you daily and to have a relationship with you. Father God, we just thank you so much for all that you are and all, the do, all that you do, the many promises that you've given us, the love that you've shown us, and the way that you've made for us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Won't you stand? If you're following along in the book, it's 334. I don't see anybody with him. Oh, two. Two out of 80 people going to pick up a hammer. <laughs> oh, three, four, four to a here, five, five now, five now, six. <laughs> <laughs> It's the thought that counts. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission. 
mission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching sun waning, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. What page, Bob? I seen he wasn't holding the bulletin and he ain't holding the hymnal and I got him. I finally got him. 134. <laughs> 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 Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow amen you may be seated
you. Thank you, Becky. Well, it is so good to be back home. I have missed you guys, and it is good to see your smiling face. It's good to hear you laugh this morning. Uh, it's been uh, so uh, good to watch you and each week as Jamie has brought outstanding messages. And uh, Jamie, thank you so much for what you have done. Our deacons have done an excellent job of making sure that everything has uh, been in place and taken care of, and I commend them for what they have done over these six weeks, and the committees have made sure things are up and running, and uh, you've just done an outstanding job of making sure the church has carried on, and I really appreciate everything that each and every one of you have done. Um, Last six weeks, Becky and I have taken a two-week vacation to South Carolina and Florida. Uh, I really enjoyed laying out on the beach in my Speedo and <laughs> getting a lot, of, a lot of sun and enjoying the waves down there. Uh, you know that's a lie. Uh, uh, my feet never touched the water and I never got an ounce of sun and never touched the sand. But... Uh, Heard and Braden really had a good time, but uh, but we did enjoy our vacation. I've seen, seen 11 doctors uh, or exams or x-ray machines or MRIs during that time getting ready for, for my surgery. Uh, all those tests have been done, and everyone has, I have passed every one of them. Even the psychological exam, I did pass it. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what she said, but don't believe anything she said. Uh, but uh, so everything's in the insurance hands now, and hopefully within a few weeks they'll go ahead and schedule my, my surgery. So uh, we're just waiting on that. But thank you for your prayers. Thank you for the time off. Uh, and again, thanks, Jamie and the deacons, for everything they have done. It is good to be back. It's good to be with you. Um, we're looking forward to the fall. A lot of things planned for the fall. Uh, there's a bazaar. There's a fall festival. And if Jamie thinks he's going to win a chili cook-off, he's got another thing coming. Uh, so, so he ain't scared. He better be. He better be trembling. So, but... Uh, uh, we're going to have our annual Thanksgiving dinner again this year. We're going to start it back this year. We, you know, and Christmas bells are ringing whether we want to think about it or not. So a lot of things going on, a lot of positive things going to be happening during the fall and the winter. So get ready. Uh, it's, it's getting ready to take place. So we'll be talking more about those things. The revival, I'm excited about it. Uh, we've been talking about it, started talking about it back in the summer. Uh, but we'll be having revival here, Union and Lockport. Uh, as it stands, Joey will be preaching uh, probably at uh, one of the churches, not his church, but one of the churches. Paul will be preaching at one of the churches. I'll be preaching at one of the churches. And we're just going to travel all over this end of the county, doing revival at each of the churches each night. Jamie will probably be leading the, the worship at each of the churches. It'll be a good time for us all to meet together. And then we'll end up back here on Saturday night with a nobleman. And I guess a meal will be that night. Yeah, it sounds like we'll eat that Saturday night and listen to the nobleman. A, a meal, a meal. Yeah. Yeah. Say, 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 I'm always announcing things I'm not supposed to. So. But, uh, but anyway. We're going to have a good time this fall with a lot of good things happening. This is an excellent crowd. We almost filled up the little white church today. Isn't this great? This is like old time. So thank you for being here today. It is good to be back. But let's get on what we're here for today. We're here to worship. So uh, we want to remember all the names on our prayer list today. Um, some of these names are new to me, but I'm sure they're your family and friends and you know all about all of these people. 
So look down that list. If you know who they are, please, please remember uh, them in prayer. Many of you have asked me about Courtney. Courtney has been in the hospital a couple times since we've been gone, but she is back home now. She is on oxygen full time now, um, and, and, and uh, she is scheduled for another surgery. Uh, she sees the doctor on Wednesday, and uh, she is scheduled for another surgery very shortly. Uh, so continue to pray for her and Braden, and uh, uh, we appreciate your prayers for them. But remember all these people on our prayer list, and uh, don't if they're your family and friends, I know you'll be praying for them, but look at each name and think about them this week as you go to the Lord in prayer. Now, our scripture comes from Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. May God add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, thank you for each and every person who has made an attempt to be here this morning. And Lord, we all come with burdens on our hearts. We have needs ourselves and we have needs within our families. And so, Lord, we lift all of those needs to you this morning, asking that you would answer them according to your perfect will. Lord, we have a long list of names before us this morning, family and friends, church members. And, Lord, they have physical needs, and we ask that you would meet those needs. You are the great physician, and we know, Lord, that those needs can be met by you. And so we lift these people to you this morning asking that you heal them according to your perfect will. But Lord, most of all this morning, there are people that we know of, Lord, who need, who need a spiritual cleansing, who need you in their life. And so Lord, those names that come to our mind, family members or friends, Lord, we lift those names to you this morning and ask, Lord, that somehow you would give us the determination and, and the, the, Lord, the willingness to go to them and tell them about Jesus, that they may accept you into their life, but Lord, that they would know the same Jesus that we know. We pray for those people this morning. Thank you for this church, the mighty works that have been done these last six weeks, and the things that are going to take place in the future. We already pray for this revival that we're talking about. We pray for Union Church. We pray for Lockport Church. We pray for Franklinton Church. Lord, that during that three-night revival that there would be people touched that would come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Revive us. Revive this church. Revive those churches that we would all get on fire on this end of the county, that we may know Jesus and that we may preach him in this end of the county and people might be touched by our lives. Now bless the rest of this service. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. It's a little little story, short story. Uh, I was digging out some stuff in my uh, desk I, about a month ago, and <clears throat> I came across this song that I had written down, and I thought, well, that's somebody else's song. I was just writing words to it, maybe. And I got to looking at it, and I said, well, that don't sound like any song I've ever <laughs> heard. I have no recollection of writing this song. I don't remember it. I don't know how long it's been in my folder. I know it was old. and um, But I, I got it out, and I started putting music to it, and I said uh, I was going to do it last week. No, 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 no. No, here's, here's the best part. So I started getting, I started kind of getting this sinus infection on, like, Saturday or Friday when I got home from North Carolina. And Jenny sends me this message and says, am I singing this weekend, next weekend, both? What am I? I was like, you can have it, please. Oh, yes, because there's no way I could have got a song out. And she did a fantastic job, awesome job. 
But then this week rolls around, and I, you know, I, I had preached on grace too. But anyways, um, <laughs> that's why I was like this. I didn't even realize this song kind of goes with it. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to wait now. But now you'll get a better perspective of it today. But when Jackie said, I'm doing the next four on this, 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 and grace, and I was like, oh, I get to do that song this week. And it just so happens that, I'm going to try to get it just so happens that a buddy of mine, if I would have written it the other day, it would have been for him. He's, he's in the hospital. He's, so God works. <laughs> it's just amazing to me sometimes that I sit back and I go, wow, God, I get it. I get it. His timing is absolutely perfect. So It's called It's Never Too Late. See you staring at the sky All of your regrets just running down your face You think you finally crossed the line You feel you sealed your fate But it's never too late to call on him and whatever you've done or wherever you've been and all of your mistakes they're covered by And as long as there's a breath to take, it's never too late. It's hard to hide the pain of life. It's a losing game you've played too long. Listen to the voice of pride that says you're too far gone. Well, believe me, you're wrong because it's never too late to call on him. And whatever you've done. Or wherever you've been And all of your mistakes Well, they're covered by grace And as long as there's a breath to take It's never too late all who may be listening and to all who may be lost there is peace and there is freedom and forgiveness at the cross cause it's never too late call on him and whatever you've done or wherever you've been and all of your mistakes well they're covered by grace 
And as long as there's a breath to take It's never too late Thank you, Jamie. Forgive me for when I was thanking Jamie and her deacons. I left out Amy and Sarah for leading worship. Ladies, thank you for what you two did. Um, amazing um, job that all of you did. man had too much to drink at a party and he made a foolish spectacle of himself and he passed out. His wife was very upset with him. She threatened to divorce him, leave him, walk out on him. He became very remorseful and he promised he would never, ever, ever take another, another drink. She said she understood and that she would forgive him and forget about it. Months went by, but every occasion that she had, she would bring up the incident and remind him of the occasion when he drank and made a fool of himself. For a while, he didn't say anything. And finally, he had enough of it. And one night, he said to her, I thought you said you were going to forgive and forget. And she said, I have forgiven and forgotten. But I just don't want you to forget that I have forgiven and forgotten. <laughs> Aren't we a lot like that? We don't want people to forget that we have forgiven and forgotten. Somehow we cannot wipe it out of our memory when people have hurt us or done something to us. But that's not our God. God's not like that. Isaiah 42, 25 says, I, even I, am he who blots out all your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. Grace. God forgives us of our sins and he remembers them no more. covers our sin with his blood and they're as white as snow. The religious leaders brought her to Jesus, threw her down in the sand and says, here she is, Jesus. We caught her in the very act, the very act of adultery. What are you going to do with her? Now, they knew the law. And they knew Jesus knew the law. The book of law suggested many things could be done, including stoning her. The crowd looked on. What would Jesus do? 
Remember those little bracelets we used to wear? What would Jesus do? WWJD. What would Jesus do? Jesus stoops down and he begins to write in the sand. There's been many debates on what Jesus wrote in the sand. We don't really know. But I suspect Jesus probably began to write some of their sins. And after a while, he stood up and he said, He who is without sin may cast the first stone. And slowly, one by one, all the religious leaders turned and walked We have to remember when I point at you and you and you and you, what's taking place? Three fingers point back at me. And we are so guilty of pointing at others, right? I see what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. We see other people's sins. We're so guilty of pointing at other people's sins, but we fail to see what we're doing. We are so self-righteous. And as Jesus stooped and wrote in the sand, Somehow these religious leaders realized that they weren't so lily white themselves. And one by one they walked away and when Jesus stood up, he looked at the woman and says, where are your accusers? And she says, they've all left. There's no one here to accuse me anymore. Jesus says, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Grace. Wonderful, marvelous grace extended toward a prostitute. The book of law said, we can do all these things to you, including stoning you to death. But Jesus says, go your way and sin no more. On a hot Friday afternoon, Two men found guilty of all kinds of crimes. There were so many crimes, the Bible doesn't even list what they were. They could have been thieves, they could have been guilty of rape, they could have been guilty of murder, they could have been guilty of all kinds of things. The only thing we know that they were sentenced to death. And on a hot Friday afternoon, we find them hanging on two crosses outside of Jerusalem. They're cursing the crowd. They're mean, they're ugly. And between the two men, we find Jesus. A man completely innocent, a man who hasn't done anything wrong. And it's these two thieves, these two riotous men hurl anger insults at the crowd as they're cursing the crowd we see Jesus hanging between them 
and there's something different about Jesus. Rather than cursing the crowd and spitting at the crowd and spewing hatred words at the crowd, Jesus only speaks words of love. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. One of the men, so impressed by the words of Jesus, realizes that there's something different about this man. And he asked Jesus if he could join him when he comes into his kingdom. Jesus, with his last few breaths, says to the man, Today you will be with me in paradise. Grace, wonderful, marvelous grace, extended to a thief while he's dying on a cross. You know, we focus so much, you and I, on the nails in the hands of in the feet of Jesus. Three nails, don't we? We focus so much on the, the, the cross and the nails in his hands and his feet. And the blood that was shed on the cross. The grace of Jesus dying on the cross. But I want us to back up for a minute. Let, let's back up. Back up. focus on it's behind me we focus on the cross our sins were forgiven because of the cross yeah but it began way before the cross that grace that marvelous grace folks it, it began with a lashing. I honestly think that Jesus looked forward to the nails in his hands and his feet after the lashing. Can you imagine 39 lashes? Have you ever been whipped to blood Come out your back or your legs. Can you imagine how painful that lashing must have been? Oh, oh my goodness. So what is grace? Grace is God's holy righteousness poured out on us by way of unmerited or unfavorable gift. Something we don't deserve. Something that we cannot possibly pay back. It is something that we do not deserve. Or we can't ever expect to pay back. William MacDonald, in his book, The Grace of God, says to seek or to earn merit or purchase salvation is an insult to God. You can't earn salvation. You can't try to pay it back. And if you do, it's an insult to God. It is a free gift. 
It is something that he gives to us. He tried to explain it this way. He said, suppose you were invited to a banquet at the White House. And so suppose President Biden invited you to, to a banquet at the White House. And you go there tonight. You dress up and you go there and you're his special guest. And you go and you sit at the finest table and they serve you the finest food that could possibly be served. And there's all the dinnerware and the silverware and the crystal and they put on the dog. That's the way we put it down south. They put on the dog, okay? Everything is just beautiful. They've got fresh flowers on the table and, and everything is just perfect. And linens, all that gobbledygook that they do at fancy places. And when you're finished, you get up to leave and the president stands at the front door and he goes to shake your hand. And you say, Prez, man, that was a mighty fine dinner. I really appreciate you serving lobster and steak and all that fancy food, that stuff I don't know what I ate, but it was good. You know, the wine and the and everything, wish it had sweet tea, but that's okay, you know. But that was a great dinner, and I know it cost a lot, and it must have cost the taxpayers a lot, so I want to pay you back, President. And so you slip him a dime and say, maybe this will help cover the meal. Now, what do you think that would say to the President of the United States? You think that'd be a compliment? That'd be a total insult, wouldn't it? And when you try to pay back God in that kind of way, it's a total insult. Grace is a gift from God. And to try to pay it back by doing something or trying to earn grace, it's an insult to God. It's his free gift to us. God forgives us of our sins. That's what the cross was all about. That's what the latchings was all about. It's his gift to us. And no matter what you've done, the prostitute, a thief, no matter what you have done in life, he loves you and he wants to forgive you. Sometimes the hardest person to forgive in life is ourselves. Satan's greatest tool is guilt. Satan's greatest tool is guilt. Sometimes we just can't forgive ourselves for something we've done years and years and years and years ago. We carry it with us all of our life. We just cannot get over something we've done in our lives. As you reflect on your life this morning, maybe you're that prostitute. Maybe you're that thief. Maybe somewhere in life you've had an abortion and you just can't get over that. Or maybe you've had an extramarital affair and you just, you can't get over it. Maybe somewhere in life you've embezzled money or stolen from somebody and you can't get past that. Maybe you have an addiction. You just can't get over that. You just can't give it up. You can't let it go. God wants to give you the grace to get past that and over that. He wants to forgive you and you to forgive yourselves. There's nothing in your life that God cannot forgive you for. And he wants to wipe the slate clean. Remember Isaiah 42, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions and remembers your sins no more. If you keep bringing up that sin of the past, you're the one beating yourself up. Not God. God's forgotten about it.
when I was 18 years old, I'd, I'd been baptized at 10. I went to church just about every Sunday. But when I was 18 years old, I was sitting in the very back of the church, back there where Steve and Tom Grissom are hiding right now. I was sitting in the back of the church. In the invitation time, the preacher gave an invitation. And after about four songs, verses just I he stopped it and he said, there's somebody here today. I know there's a young man here today who needs to give his life to the Lord and go into the ministry. Now, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, I was an 18-year-old boy. Now, I did what most 18-year-old boys had done in their lifetime. And if, you can, if you're an 18-year-old boy, you think back to when you were 18 and what you had done in your life. I had done it and was doing it. And I thought, Lord, he can't be talking about me. And if he is talking about me, Lord, what is the church going to think if I walk down that aisle? Are they going to know all the bad things I'm doing and have been doing? But I knew God was calling me out. And I knew if God called me out that morning, it meant I would have to give up some things. Remember what he told the woman caught as a prostitution? They caught her in the act of prostitution, remember? Caught her in the very act. She was a practicing prostitute. And when they all walked away, Jesus says, go and do what? Yeah, you're going to have to change your lifestyle, lady. So I knew as an 18-year-old, the things I was doing, if I walked that aisle that morning and God was calling me to be a, into the ministry, it meant what? Go and sin no more. I wasn't sure I wanted to do that because I was enjoying a lot of the things I was doing. But somehow, God didn't give me a choice. He picked a 200-pound boy up and put him down front. I still don't know how I ended up down front. So here I am 49 years later as your pastor. Grace. Grace. God said, Jackie, I forgive you for all you are doing and have been doing. Grace. Now you said, preacher, you've been perfect for 49 years. <laughs> <laughs> No, grace is a continuous thing. Thank goodness. But I'm here to tell you today that if God is calling your name, in a moment, God can change your life and give you grace for all those things you've ever done and will ever do. This morning, you may need to make that decision. Last week, Becky and I were up in Henry County and we was leaving here and I was thinking about what I was going to preach about and a song came over the radio about the Palmetto State Quartet. And it inspired the sermon day. It's called A Moment of Grace. And I encourage you to go home and listen to it. Palmetto State Quartet, 
moment of grace. But there's a line in this song that says this. I've been counted out by the self-righteous crowd who would say that I'm not worthy to live. They say you've drifted too far. You're so stuck in sin's mire. You need a miracle that only God can give. But Jesus passed by, and with his reply, he said, I choose you just to live for me today. And Jesus forgave, and all my sin was erased, and I stood in a moment of grace. A moment of grace, undeserved favor, unspeakable joy. My soul found an anchor such unmerited love and mercy that swept my soul away. He called my name and everything changed in a moment of grace. When he calls your name, everything will change in a moment of grace. If you're here this moment, this morning, you need forgiven for anything in your life. Jesus is calling your name. We're getting ready to sing a verse of invitation. I'll be down front. I encourage you to come forward and let Jesus cleanse your heart and know what it is to be forgiven and know how it is to live free in Jesus' name. Let's bow our words for a word of prayer.